Okay. Let's see if my phone will find it. Aloha and welcome, I'm WH6AZ, typically here to bring you high signal insights about radio mail, the WinLink application I created. Today we're taking a slight detour, we're going to explore the connection capabilities of a well-known HT, the Kenwood TH-D74. Although I'll be referencing the D74, discussion is relevant to its follow-up model, the TH-D75 as well. As we've seen in the live video from Josh, KI6NAZ from Ham Radio Crash Course, it can be demonstrated that the D75 won't pair with an iPhone either. As an owner of one of these radio, the first thing I tried to do was to pair it with my iPhone. The idea being that the built-in TNC in the radio is basically a modem, and as such, it should be easily accessible to applications via Bluetooth. Unfortunately, as some of you I'm sure have experienced, it doesn't work that way. First, let's unpack a few facts about Bluetooth. This technology was created for sending a variety of data types over short distances. However, as we know, wireless radio communication necessitates a portable source of power as well. That's precisely why Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE, was introduced. BLE was optimized for devices that need to run off a tiny battery for years, like fitness trackers and smart home sensors. What's problematic is that BLE isn't compatible with the older Bluetooth Classic standard. This standard is often used for its serial port profile, or SPP, which is intended for continuous high-speed data streaming. This is what the D74 is using. On the other hand, BLE is a different protocol, optimized for periodic, low-power communication. This means they can't talk to each other, it's like they speak different languages, even though they are both called Bluetooth. For some reason, most likely power management concerns, Apple made a design choice to not allow iOS devices to connect via Bluetooth Classic. Only BLE is supported. What does this mean for all of us? Picture this, we have a high-end radio price at a hefty $750. And then there's the iPhone, where a typical recent model will cost you about 900 bucks. Once you throw in the chargers, cables, extra battery and bits and bobs, you get close to two grands of gear, and they don't work with each other, which is maddening. I came to this crushing realization as I became a new ham in 2020. So as to not become a sour ham, I decided I would try to do something about this. I began thinking about the interfaces at our disposal. BLE, or Wi-Fi for the iPhone, and Bluetooth SPP and USB for the radio. Because Apple doesn't expose the serial profile on USB OTG, even for iPhone with the USB-C connector, I concluded that crafting a BLE to Bluetooth bridge would likely be the most elegant solution. With that in mind, I looked through my pile of microcontrollers and started tinkering to see if I could engineer a workaround. After a couple of false starts, I finally narrowed down to the ESP32 as the chip that would be capable of handling both BLE and Bluetooth Classic at the same time. Luckily, thanks to the impressive efforts of Heisu, OH7LZB from APRS.FI, and Rob, WX90, from Mobilinked, a standardized method for discovering and accessing a KISS TNC via BLE had been established. It would allow me to create a device that would be compatible with existing applications like the APRS.FI. In May 2020, long before the advent of Radio Mail, I kicked off the discussion in the Google support group for that app. Back then, my focus was on using it for APRS. After a bit of trial and error and a deep dive into the Bluetooth APIs, I managed to get a proof of concept up and running. I shared the code and posted a brief video to showcase it in action. After I managed to demonstrate that it could be done, my interest dwindled. This was in part because the THD74 became no longer available due to some supply chain issue, and its future was uncertain and there were even rumors that it was being discontinued. Fast forward to 2022 with the launch of Radio Mail, there was some renewed interest in using the built-in TNC for packet WinLink. I revived my initial proof of concept and lo and behold, it worked for connection-oriented session as well. 
you can see it here in action with the first generation Tiny Pico board as the adapter. The setup proved functional and some of you reported back that you had successfully replicated it. Still, the code was very much a proof of concept, being my initial foray into Bluetooth programming, and one notable limitation was the necessity to search for the radio by its name. With the release of the new THD75, I saw an opportunity to refine the code, and I dedicated some time to create a more robust solution. Today, I'm pleased to introduce BBLink, the adapter designed to handle the blues in your connection. Let's stick around, and I will guide you step by step so you too can build your own. Okay, before we jump in, let's take a look at the end result. Earlier this year, I posted a teaser video to showcase it in action, and the video gathered quite a bit of interest. Let's play it. As you can see here, Radio Mail is able to control the radio and change the frequency, put it in kiss mode before the session starts, and it will restore it back when it's all done. Some of you may also have noticed a little something sticking in the back of the radio. That's the adapter taped to the radio as I was experimenting with the best location to mount it. So let's dive in and see what we need to build one together. First, we'll need to download the source from GitHub. Just head over to github.com slash islandmagic slash bb-link and then you can git check out the code here or you can also download the zip file and this is what we're going to need to flash the firmware to the adapter. Uh, I also open here the readme that's on the repo so we can follow along. It has all the instruction about what we're going to talk about as well as the various link for the various components you're going to need to build your own. Next we'll need a board with the ESP32 controller I chose to use a board called Tiny Pico, made by Unexpected Maker. And as its name suggests, the Tiny Pico is actually tiny, and it has the ESP32 Pico version of the chip, which is really what we want. Uh, you could use other ESP32 boards, but this one is the most compact I found. And if you do use others, make sure it's the uh, Pico version of the ESP32, not other variant like the S3 as they don't support Bluetooth Classic. So make sure you check the spec and you get uh, something that's gonna work for you. While you're here on their site, make sure you download the drivers for the CH9102 uh, UART uh, chip. This is the chip that's going to allow the board to be recognized as a serial port. Uh, so you can actually flash the firmware from your PC and uh, you need to make sure you have that installed already. To purchase the board, the easiest is to buy directly from the maker. So you just scroll down by a tiny Pico. You have various sources you can get it from. And then at the bottom, you have the unexpected maker store. Just click on that and you can order it from, straight from them. Uh, it ships from Australia, but usually it's uh, there in the US, usually within a week. Now this is really all you need to make the adapter. You could power it from a portable USB charging bank, but if you want a more robust solution, you'll need a few more things. You'll want to get a LiPo battery so the adapter can have its own power source. And I've had reasonable success with AliExpress, uh, but you may find it uh, from other um, vendor. The model I use is the 602248. And what's particularly nice about this battery is it's about the same width as the tiny Pico board. And it provides 600 milliamp hour capacity and with that, you get about four hours of continuous operation. We'll, we'll look at the power consumption in a little while in more detail, but this is roughly what you get with this uh, battery. The last thing is that you probably want to have some enclosure for your adapter and you'll need a case. So in the code repo, I've included a couple of um, files for a case I designed that can be 3D printed and uh, work reasonably well. Now, I'm not a mechanical engineer, so I would love for someone in the community to create an even better version for it. Uh, but for now, this actually works quite well. So the enclosure, you get the bottom uh, where you can place the battery, and then it has two holes so that it can be mounted in the back of the radio where the belt uh, holder usually goes. And then you have a lid that um, goes on top of it. 
So if you don't have a 3D printer, you can easily order this from one of the cloud provider. Uh, one place I like to get 3D print from is a place called Craft Cloud. And you can just easily get a quote from various uh, vendor here. So you just click here, select the two uh, STL files that are in the enclosure directory in the repo, upload them, and then you'll get various quotes here as well as choices of material. Personally, I like nylon uh, better over PLA. I like the finish uh, better. You don't have the little you know, marks on the side. And um, you can get it in various colors. You can get it polished. For me, I like to uh, get it in white and I'll just end up um, painting it afterwards. Last thing you're gonna need is a small metal surface that can be used as a capacitive touch switch for turning the adapter on or off when it's in the enclosure. I use the Brad Stud, and you probably have some of those laying around in a art supply box. If not, any small metal, uh, little round metal piece will also do the trick. Okay, so our board has finally arrived and let's take a look at what's uh, inside. You get the a few things in there. If I can get it out of the package, there you go. So you get the board itself, as well as a couple of uh, header and um, connector for typically for the battery. We're not going to need those as we're going to solder everything from the um, solder everything on the board itself. So before we turn it on, uh, let's head over to the Arduino IDE. And uh, before we actually do that, uh, let's make sure you remember to install the driver for the uh, UART chip on the board itself, uh, the CH9102. If not, uh, please go back to the Tiny Pico website and I'll be waiting here for you. Okay, so before we can actually flash the firmware, we need to install a few library. So you wanna go into Arduino settings and we're going to specify a board manager URL um, so that we can actually install libraries straight from the maker of the SP32. So if you go in the readme, there is a URL, you can just copy paste here in the settings, click OK. And then if you go here in the board manager, you can look for ESP32. And this way we have directly access to the ESP32 by Espressive instead of the Arduino version. And as you can see, you get a more recent version here. The code has been tested with uh, version two. There's a version three out there that's in beta. It's not compatible with the code yet. So please make sure you install only version uh, two. So I have it installed here already. Then next you're going to want to, uh, to install a few libraries. First, the tiny Pico comes with a helper library that you can install or that you should install. So go ahead and install that as well as the free RTOS library, same deal, install it. And then last, you're gonna need the Arduino Q, which same thing you will install here. Okay, so now we have all our library installed. We should be able to compile and flash uh, the firmware. Before we do that, let me plug in the board. You can see here it's flashing all sorts of color. The Tiny Pico has a um, tricolor LED, which uh, we're going to use in the adapter to represent various, uh, various state. There you go. Okay, so now you go in the drop down menu and it should actually uh, show you the board that you have selected here. So we can select the UM Tiny Pico and then you have to pick the port. What's very important here is to, you'll see two serial port showing up and you want to make sure you select the WCH USB uh, one. For some reason, if you select the other one, the flashing will actually uh, fail. So make sure you select the WCH, click OK. And now we can just click on the arrow here, upload. And this will go and compile the sketch. And once everything is compiled, we'll actually um, upload it into the, uh, the board itself. OK, so it's showing you progress here. And then as soon as it's done compiling, it will switch and you'll see here the progress of the, um, 
of the upload. Okay, so now it's done and it's uploading to the Tiny Pico and it will restart the board automatically when, when it's done. Okay, the board is restarting and if we go over to the serial port, we can see a little bit of debug information here. So now you notice the LED is amber, which is the idle um, color for the adapter. And one thing we can take a look at here is um, there's a switch, capacitive switch that allows you to turn the board uh, on and off. So I'm gonna use this very sophisticated uh, paper clip and I'm just going to put it in the pin uh, number four here. There you go. And this will act as my uh, switch for now. If I press and hold, it starts blinking and that will turn the adapter off. And then of course, uh, when you're on USB, so the other LED is still on, but if you're on battery power, the uh, adapter goes into very deep sleep and uh, with a very, very small uh, power consumption. So it can run on battery for, for a year or, or more. Um, so to wake it up, just briefly touch the uh, um, switch, it turns on. You can also check the battery level, which of course we don't have one, but it will still show you. So if you press briefly, it will show you green. Uh, if the battery is certain um, uh, low voltage, it will actually blink green and indicate various uh, status. Okay, so our board looks pretty good here. It looks like the code is running. And now let's take a look at a few other things we need to add to make a complete solution. Okay, now we need to assemble a few things. First, you want to solder the battery and a wire for the capacitive switch. Solder the wire on pin four and run it on the side of the board. And then carefully solder the battery one wire at a time and make sure to not short the battery. You may want to use a little bit of tape to isolate it as you go. Then you need to prep the case. Uh, here is the first revision of the case that had a, actually a mistake. The board was sitting too far into the case. It's been corrected in the latest version and you just need to do some light sanding and then you can paint it. You also need to drill the hole for the button and for the LED. I then filled the LED hole with a little bit of transparent silicone so it can act as a light pipe. Next, put everything into the case and fish the wire out. And now you're ready to solder the button. I glued it to the case with a little bit of hot glue. And with that, you should be done. Now don't close the box quite yet. There are two options for the box. You can close it and use it as a standalone box, or you can attach it to the radio like a backpack. If you choose that option, use the screws from the belt clip and screw the box in the back of the radio and then you can close the lid. Let's also take a quick look at power consumption. On standby, the adapter draws around 70 milliamp and then when both Bluetooth connections are active, it goes up to 140 milliamp. So on a 600 milliamp hour battery, that gives you about four hours of continuous usage. One of the cool feature of the ESP32 is that it goes into deep sleep so when the device is asleep, it will only draw about 40 microamps, which means your battery won't drain if you leave it off for an extended period of time. Now that we have the adapter on the radio, let's see how it works. Okay, first we'll need to pair the adapter with the radio. And to do that, we need to download the BB-Link Configurator app. I created it as a standalone app so that Radio Mail is not required to configure the adapter in case someone wants to use it with other applications such as APRS.fi. So go ahead, uh, let's head over to the App Store and then we can search for BBLink and you'll see here BBLink Configurator and then I already have it installed so I can just open it here. And when it starts, it will look for the adapter. So let's make sure the adapter is turned on. And yep, the uh, LED is amber, it's on. Here it remembers the last one it already uh, seen on the network. So I can just tap BB-Link and connect. 
Now before we can pair, we need to put the radio in uh, discovery mode. So to do that, we hit menu and then go into the Bluetooth menu and then pairing mode. Once it's in pairing mode, we can tap paired radio on the configurator and it will scan for the radio nearby and will show you the name of the radio that it finds. Take a few seconds. And here it is, it found my THD74. And now pairing is complete. So I can just go and click OK. And that's all there is to it. This is a one-time operation. And from then on, the adapter will remember the radio and pair with it automatically. If you ever need to pair with a different radio, what you can do is scroll down and hit reset adapter. It will just remove the radio pairing information from the adapter, and then you can start the process all over again. Uh, what you can also configure here in the, in the uh, application is you can set um, whether or not you want the adapter to control the radio, meaning that if it receives command from radio mail to change frequency, the adapter can actually um, tell the radio to change mode, get into kiss mode, change the frequency, and then restore it at the end. If you don't want the adapter to interact with the radio in that, in that mode, in that fashion, you can just uh, turn it off here. Now that the adapter is paired, let's head over to radio mail. But before we do that, let's make sure you quit completely from the application because only one application can be connected at a time. Now open radio mail, go into settings, and then scroll down to packet kiss TNC modem and then default TNC. And it will go and scan for the TNC it found bbling here. You can just select it, click done. And now let's make a connection. I'm going to look for my favorite packet station here, my little test station I have. And so if you notice on the right um, side of the screen here, it shows a little um, HT icon. This is to indicate that um, radio mail can actually do cat control for the device. It can change frequency, which is, which is nice. One of the neat feature is that the adapter will actually query the radio and determine what band you want the TNC to be on. I have mine set up for the B band. Uh, you can change that in the radio settings, but the adapter is smart enough to know that. So if you look carefully here on the top, I have my repeater that I'm monitoring on the bottom. I have my uh, frequency that is going to be set to now the, the 145.09 uh, when I establish a connection. So let's try. I hit connect. Now the radio goes into kiss mode. It's going to change the frequency, it did that already. And now it's doing the exchange. Connecting. And now it's done. And if you notice at the end of the exchange, it restored the frequency. And because we started with the radio not in kiss mode, it also takes that off. So if the radio was already in kiss mode, for example, um, the adapter will actually respect that and, and leave it in the same state as it found. So it should be small enough that uh, it basically allows you to establish a session, uh, set up everything it's required, and then basically restore everything to normal and get out of the way. Now let's have a little fun. Because BB-Link is exposing the TNC of the radio, it can be used by other apps. The only app that I know that uses this is APRS.fi, so let's see how that works. Open the app, and then I can just go into the settings here and look for the adapter as well. So it found it and I will just connect to it. And as you can see here, even though APRSFI doesn't know about BB-Link, because it connected to it uh, as a TNC, the adapter automatically will put the radio in kiss mode so that uh, it will you know, basically be a pass through and make sure that all the command can be sent directly. So uh, I set up my radio to the right APRS frequency. And here I have my little uh, Pico APRS so now I can go ahead and try to send a message. So this is WH6AZ7. And let's see if that works. 
this is a test hit send and now the radio is sending and then on the right on the pico you can see it received the message and if i can try to reply and i'm going to reply with a one so i don't have to type too much on the keyboard here and here's okay hit okay there you go and now i can hit send and now it's being received by the kenwood radio and displayed into the app so there you go uh, even though those radio uh, both the kenwood and the pico you could do the texting functionality from the device itself um, you're forced to use the t9 um, keypad which is kind of hard for texting um, so by being able to use your iphone the uh, utility has increased significantly and uh, it's a lot more fun i hope this was useful and that you'll feel inspired to build a, an adapter all the instructions are on the github repo for bb link i would love to hear your feedback so let me know in the comment and if you have any suggestions or run into problems please create an issue on github until next time 73 and aloha